Let's think about the context of rapid change. What's really going on out there? Well, here's my two sons. You know, I've been fortunate enough to work in a home office for 20 years, and I've, I've, I've been fortunate enough to watch them as they've grown up and, and to view their perspective on the world. And, and one thing that became obvious when they were about six or eight years old, they're, they're 14 and 16 now, one thing that became obvious with them is that they live in a world which is completely unlike the world that I live in. And what became obvious is that their perception of the world is dramatically different because they've had none of the interactions that I have had. Where do we start? Well, I got up one Saturday morning, and you know, for, for a time with our sons, you know, Saturday morning was cartoon time. You know, Saturday morning, you know, it's when they get to get up and they get on the couch and the cartoons are on, and they know mom and dad are going to leave them you know, alone for a half an hour, an hour, two hours. They can just sit and watch cartoons. And I got up one Saturday morning. My eldest son is sitting there, Willie. He's about eight years old at this point in this picture. And, and you know, look at him. He's in a grumpy mood. He's, he's just not happy. And I said, well, Willie, what's wrong? And he said, there's no data, Daddy. I said, what? He said, there's no data, Daddy. And I said, Willie, I have no idea what you mean. What, what do you mean there's no data? And he said, look, and he took our digital cable remote control. And you know, a digital cable, you press the button, and you get this electronic program guide that comes up on the screen. Shows you what's on on every single channel. And he hit that button, and for every single channel, rather than giving a listing of what's on, every single little box in the screen read, no data. There'd been some type of glitch with the system the night before. He didn't know what to do. He did not know what to do to find a show to watch. So what did I do? I went to the front door, got the Saturday morning paper, I got the TV guide out, and I came, came back in and I said, you know, let me show you how we did it in the olden days. <laughs> he, he and Thomas were sitting there looking at this thing. Did people actually use this to find TV shows to watch? Think about that. They are in a universe which is completely unlike that of ourselves. They didn't even know what a TV guide was. You know, I went skiing once, we were a skiing family, and went, you know, we were uh, out in the slopes, and the night before we went into a local grocery store, the lady in the store went to pay for the groceries with a check. She went to pay for the groceries with a check, and Tom said to me, what's she doing, Dad? <laughs> and think, about, think about it. Most of us pay for things with credit cards, debit cards, you know, electronic forms of interaction in the store. He didn't even know what a check was. And I sort of explained, you know, she's writing a check, it goes to the bank, you know, magic happens, money moves around. And, you know, he thinks for a couple of minutes, he, he means, you know, I could go to the store with a piece of paper, to the candy store, and, you know, write out Thomas and get free candy. This is great. No, Thomas, that's not how it works. Another time, I was in the home office, I was cleaning out the beer fridge in the home office. And, and I had canisters of 35 millimeter film there. This was about 10, 15 years ago, and we still use such things. And, and, you know, Thomas came down, he was about five or six years old. And, and you know, what's this, Dad? I said, well, it's film. He kind of chuckled at me. And I had a little discussion. I said, no, no, it's film. And I got out my old original 35 millimeter camera. I said, stand there, I'm going to take a picture of you. He stood there, I took a picture. He, you know what he did? He ran around to the back of the camera to see the picture right away. And I said, it doesn't work like that. I said, you know, what we've got to do is we've got to take 23 more pictures, then we're going to drive it to the man down the street. Maybe we'll go get a candy while we're waiting for the pictures. He walks out of the office. He said, you know, this is really dumb, Dad. He walks out of his, the office. His brother is there. His brother says, what are you doing? And he says, Dad was showing me something from the olden days. <laughs> Think about it. Think about what is happening. The kids that are in your programs today are in a world in which stuff, which is a part of our everyday daily lives, is becoming stuff from the olden days faster than ever before. I had a Jeep. It was a standard transmission. And I'm driving along one day, you know, and Thomas is sitting in the back seat. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, you know, I shift gears. And all of a sudden, he says, you know, Daddy, why do you have a joystick in your car? <laughs> Think about that. Because, you know, in, in his world, he plays Xbox, whatever it is, and he's got a joystick with some automotive game, and Daddy's got a joystick in his car. Their perception of the world is extremely unique. Anybody see this article that appeared in the Washington Post last week? Here was a fellow who was observing that my, my, my two-year-old daughter surprised me the other day because I'm sitting there, I'm reading a Kindle, an electronic e-book reader, and my two-year-old daughter looked at it and said, Daddy's book. Her very first formative observation of what a book is happens to be for an electronic device. Our world is changing faster than we think.